OK. Today, last week we talked about exponential functions. Remember that exponential functions, generally speaking, unless they've been reflected or moved in some way, look like that. They curve upward. And they pass the horizontal line test. So they're one to one. That means they have to have an inverse function. But for hundreds of years, maybe thousands, people were not able to find the inverse until back in the 1700s, I think, late 1700s, a Scottish mathematician accidentally found the, uh, the inverse to exponential functions, and he was working on something else entirely. But he found the, um, um, you know, and the whole world celebrated. Finally, we have an inverse function. We know how to find it, an inverse function to the exponential function. Hooray, hooray for the world. OK, so I'm going to write out the general form of an exponential function. Y equals A, a number, to the X power. That's the general form of all exponential functions. Now we're going to find the inverse. Let me write inverse. OK, remember you switch the X and the Y. So X equals A to the Y power. Then you solve for Y. But this is what stumped all those brilliant minds for so many years. But now we can do it. Here it is. Y equals log base A of X. That looks pretty strange, and it's enough to cause anxiety for anyone. But you'll get used to it, and that's the idea is to adapt and survive. So that's the way you switch back and forth between inverse functions when one is an exponential and the other is a logarithm. Now over here, we're given an exponential function. So this will be turning it around this way to I need to move that down though, because I made this low. These do take up room because your base, the base right there, is going to be down low beside what ought to be the bottom of the G. However, you're going to notice that um, in my math lab, uh, the, the, the type set, the print set, um, makes this A a little bit higher. So it can be tricky sometimes, but you'll get used to it. OK, so over here, we're going to have two. Equals 32 to the 1 fifth power. Now here's how this works. This is the exponent, you can tell that. This is the base because it holds up the exponent. And when you've got a regular problem like this, yeah, you can call this the other number. You'll see what we do with the other number. 
when you change this into an equivalent logarithmic function, you write the word log, you take the base and write it down here. You type, you take the other number and you write it here. And then you take the exponent and write it here. And that's how you do this. So your, your big um, challenge is to remember how these are set up. You've got the other number equals the base raised to the exponent and the equivalent logarithmic function is log, you put the base down here, you put the other number here, and the other number, once it's here, is now called the argument, equals the exponent. If you keep flashcards, this should go on your flashcards. Now to dissect this problem, I think the easiest thing to do is to look at this. Because a number that holds up the, the exponent is the base. So it's easy to see that that's the base. It'll go there. This is the exponent. It will go here on the other side of the equal sign. And then there's, what do you call that? Well, I just call it the other. But once it's put here, it's called the argument. Okay, now this is all, as I said, very strange but you'll get used to it as we go along. But first, I need to explain something else to you. Let's just look at some numbers that have exponents. How about five to the third power, um, two to the seventh, I'm just making up numbers, these are, these numbers are not special in any way. Um, um, I don't know, eight to the fourth power. These are the regular integers we know and love. You know the arithmetic for these. You've been using them all your life. Um, five plus two, five minus two, uh, eight divided by two, uh, eight times two. Okay, the, that's the regular arithmetic for integers and for rational numbers and even for irrational numbers. But there actually is another level of number called exponents. And until this minute, if you haven't had this class before, or if you haven't, or if you dropped before the end of the class, you have not been told this basic truth about mathematics. And that is that exponents have their own number system. The exponents number system And the exponents number system is the logarithmic number system.
There. There we go. Um, you first began experiencing the exponential number system, if you will, when we talked about some of the basic rules like x to the a times x to the b equals x to the a plus b. And an example of that would be, um, how about 3 to the second power times 3 to the fourth power is 3 to the 2 plus 4 power, which is 3 to the sixth power. Okay, that's the product rule of exponents. And then, I, you've been through this so many times, I know you're probably tired of it. If we have, now notice that the bases are the same. The bases have to be the same. Bases must be the same. Okay, now, now I need more room. Now here we have X or any number or letter raised to a power. That's very nice. But then it gets raised to a power again. When that happens, you multiply the powers. That's X to the A times B. And here we can go over here and use these same numbers. Three to the two. And if instead of doing this, you take three to the two squared, three squared, and raise it to the fourth power, what you do is you take the base, you write it once, and then you multiply the two exponents, two times four. So you have three to the eighth power. And then there's the quotient rule, which means the division rule, where if you have X to the A over X to the C, equals x to the a minus c. All right, so again, using our numbers, if we have three to the two divided by three to the four, and notice that the bases are the same, you're going to get three to the two minus four, which is three to the negative two, which is one over three to the positive two. And if you carry that on out, it's one to the ninth. Just a little review there, but you might've gone the other way. Three to the fourth power divided by three to the second power equals three to the fourth minus second power equals three squared, which is nine. So now what we're going to do with logarithms is imagine all this stuff. There's another word for stuff. Imagine all this stuff with exponents. What if you were an exponent? You're not, we think, because we're, we're the most familiar with the integer level, the base level, we think on the base level. But what if you moved up a level? to the exponent level. 
What would all these manipulations seem like to you? That's what you're going to discover as we work with logarithms. And that'll be part two of today. What is life like from the perspective of the exponents rather than from the perspective of the base? But right now, let's get to the rest of part one. We're going to have some conversions and we're going to do a lot of them so that you can see what happens. Here we have a logarithmic function. We're going to change it to an exponential function. Well, OK, down here. Let's make this even bigger. This four is a base. In fact, the way you read this out loud is log base four of 16 equals two. Log base four of 16 equals two. Four is the base. Two is the exponent. 16 is the argument, but you can also think of it as the other number. So we have a base raised to an exponent, four raised to the two equals the other number, the argument, 16. This is the equivalent exponential function. Sometimes, most of the time, in higher level math books, you'll see a double-headed arrow because these are exactly equivalent to each other. Okay. Now, convert to a logarithmic equation. We have to analyze first. There's an exponent. I would put it higher. I would write it like this. Okay. 10 to the fourth power equals 10,000. This holds up that. The most obvious outstanding feature of this is that the four is an exponent. Anything that holds up the exponent is the base. And that's the other number. To change this to an exponential function, what we have is log to the base of the argument or the other number equals the exponent. So we're just going to change the order of these pieces. Well, OK, log. Base is 10. Exponent is 4. Other goes here. Whoops. 10, 0, 0, 0. All right, now, if there were any justice, that would be all there is to it, but we live in a world that has power groups. People in the sciences insisted 
after this all was published and kept being worked on and published more. They insisted that they not have to use the tin. Oh, especially the financial people. That tin would be used so much that their little hands would get tired. I'm telling you the truth here. That is the true story. So they insisted that log base tin just be log. So log of 10,000 is four. And when you do not see a base down here, that base is 10. So let's go back up here and write this. I'm going to write it up here the right way. You would say log 10,000 equals 4. Knowing that that's log base 10. I know, it's kind of unfair. Now it's going to happen again. Oh, headache. Well, the most visible number here to me, the most outstanding is the exponent. That sort of jumps out at you. So I'm going to label that the exponent. This is holding up the exponent, so E, remember E is a number that's about 2.7. E is a number holding up the exponent, so it's the base. And then T is going to be the other. All right, so we're going to have log base E of the other equals the exponent. So let me label these for a while. You're going to need it probably. I'm remembering the things that I wished that my college algebra professor when I took it in college that I wish she would have done. Yes, I do. Other. But now it's called the argument, of course. So I'll write both the arg and the other. Now this is something I'm, I'm remembering how people in my class when I was a student would say, but I don't understand. There is nothing to understand. There is only something to memorize. Here's what you memorize. This. And this. because they're true. Okay. Sometimes in life you have to do things without understanding. Logarithms are used extensively in medicine, extensively in the sciences, and now let's get back to what we were doing because we're not through. People in finances insisted that log base 10 be called just log. Well, people in the sciences where log base E is literally used all the time, insisted that they have a special name too. Well, they couldn't take just log. So, 
And incidentally, E is used in finances as well, as you will learn. Log base E got its name changed. And now you get to memorize it. Log base E is called the LN. Let me show you on your calculator. The log button right there over on the left side, right beside the seven key. The log is log base 10. You could even see 10 to the X written above it. Here's the LN key. That's log base E. And you can see E to the X written above your LN key. So, yes, LN, whenever you see LN, it's log base E. So the LN of T, and I'm sure your, your book will write it without parentheses, excuse me, equals negative two. So let's do the whole thing. E to the negative two equals T. changes to the ln of t equals negative 2. Takes practice, but you get it. Some people will get it right away. Others take longer, but with practice, you can get it. Okay, now here's another E. E! What we have written down here is E to the sixth power equals 403.4288, and we have to change this to a logarithmic equation. Don't go too far. Well, the first thing I would do would be to dissect. This is the base. It's holding up an exponent. And that's the other number. All right, so then I would write it log base E of the other equals the exponent six. This is always an exponent. Always logarithms are exponents. We're living up on the exponent part of reality. Now here we have a logarithmic equation. It's kind of a normal logarithmic equation, right? No E's, no 10's. It's just a normal kind of base 3. That is the base. Log base 3 of 9 equals 2. Here's the exponent. Here's the other number, which... See, I lost, I lost points when I took college algebra, if I did not put parentheses around the argument. Boy, in high school, I had I had uh, introduction to college algebra and that was taught by Mr. Stewart, who had to be the meanest, pickiest math teacher in the whole world. And I mean, he would pick, 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 pick. You could lose credit just for breathing. Okay, so now I write this out. You've got a base, 
you've got an exponent, and then you've got an other, which is the argument, arg. So the base is three, the exponent is two, and the argument is nine. Look, you know that's true. So this is the world from the perspective of the exponent, and this is the world from the perspective that we're used to, the perspective of the base. Now we're going to do it again. We've got the ln of 61 equals 4.1109. I'm going to write it, I'm going to translate it first, log base E, log base E of four, uh, 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 that's the exponent. Well, but still, log base E of 61 equals 4.1109, because all I'm doing is translating. Now, the base raised to the exponent equals the argument or the other number. That's your answer. Now, finally, we get to use a calculator. Yay! Okay, we are going to use the system. We're going to use two systems, actually. All right, some of you, well, everybody can do this problem this way, and then there's also a fancier way. But we're going to use, um, for all of these, the instructions say use the change of base formula. We're going to change to base 10 in the following way. Log of 14, the upper number, divided by log of seven. And I'm gonna put that in the calculator. So the way you use the change of base formula is you take log base 10 of 14 divided by log base 10 of seven. First you take the other number, the argument, then you take the base. And there it is down there. This is going to equal log 14, close your parentheses or you'll get the wrong answer, divided by log 7. Again, close your parentheses. Stop that. Okay, log 14 divided by log 7. Enter. There's our answer. And it says round to four decimal places. Okay. One point three five six two. And I'm going to take a picture of this so you have it in your notes. So you'll know what to do. Okay. 
Now there is another way, and it all depends on the kind of, uh, it all depends on the um, kind of calculator you have. So you might check your calculator and see if you have it. If you don't, no problem. You just do this. But if you do, here's what you do. Hit the math button. And if this will continue going down, go down to A and you'll find log base. I'm trying to ignore the fire engines. I think I've explained before that I live a block, a block away from the fire firehouse. So there's always excitement going on. There's also a certain safety. You know, I feel safer. Okay, like I said, this is this first one is the only one I'm going to go to this much trouble on. All right, now I am going to see the A log base is highlighted. I hit enter. Down here, I type the base. Up here, I type the argument. So, let's go back here. Log base seven. So I'm just gonna type that. It's already got log. Put a seven down there in that box. And then put a 14 in the parentheses. and then come to the outside, then hit enter. You get exactly the same answer either way. So a lot of people like to use log base because it's already set up for them to put, to, to put numbers in that look just like the screen, but not everybody has it. So if you don't, you use this which quite honestly is faster. You don't have to go searching through math. Okay, so let me, oh, I could have put both of these in there, but alas, no room now. No. Okay. Well, all right. There. So let's pull out and look at this while I erase all these little dots. Now I know that for sure, I have to click on the sheet before I copy. Okay, so log base seven of 14 can be done this way. Let me put a circle around that. Well, actually, with the change of base formula, or if you want to get fancy, you can do it by clicking on math, going to log base, and then just filling in the boxes. 
either way. But for the these other two problems, I'm just going to use log base. Okay. Now we have log base three of 80. You can also, if you want to, I never do, but I will now just to show you that you can calculate this by using the LN of 80 over the LN of 3. LN 80. Close parentheses divided by the LN of 3. Close parentheses. Round to four decimal places. One, two, three, four. That nine, well, okay. 3.9886. Here are the four decimal places. The fifth decimal place is nine. That will round the six up. So the answer will be 3.9886. Seven. Now you try for yourself. Use log. Well, I'll just do it real fast. Log. Whoop, whoop, no. Log 80. Close parentheses. Divided by log 3. Same answer. Now, I don't want you to think that the ln of 80 equals the log of 80. I'll prove it to you. Let's find out. Log 80 equals about 1.9. ln 80 equals about 4.4. The ln of 80 does not equal the log of 80. The ln of 3 does not equal the log of 3. But the ratios are the same. So the log of 80 over the log of 3 will give you the same number. I just always use log. Ln is going to be used, the way I use ln is for special stuff that we get to later after the break. Okay, let's do this. Log base six of 0 0.10. Log 0 0.10, close parentheses, divided by log six. Close parentheses, enter. I get Well, I get 0 0.0531, there are four decimal places. And then a nine. And the nine will cause the one to go up to a two. But if you prefer, you can always put a zero in front. 0 0.0532. Okay, so, so far you've learned two things. You've learned how to translate back and forth between exponential and logarithmic functions. You're gonna be using that a lot next Saturday. And you've learned how to put a problem in your calculator by using the change of base formula or log base if you have it, though I view that as totally unnecessary. All right, now we move to some word problems. Yay, word problems! We love them! Maybe we don't. Okay. 
logs are used a lot in real life. So we're gonna. The average walking speed R of a person living in a city of population P in the thousands is modeled by this function. R of P equals 0 0.37 times the LN of P plus 0 0.05 where R is in feet per second. Well, that's walking speed, I hope so. The population of Boston, must be a different Boston, is 532,000. Find the average walking speed of people living in Boston. Well, there are lots of other people living in Boston besides Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I mean, there are Bostons in other places. We have the Boston Mountains just south of Fayetteville. That has an interesting story you should look up. Anyway, here's our formula. And since P appears to be, well, the population of whichever Boston this is, 532,000. Since that population is measured in thousands already, we don't have to include the thousands. We can just say P equals 532. Now that is the biggest error right there. All right, so we've got R of P, that is walking speed when the population is P, equals 0 0.37 times the LN of P plus 0 0.05. All right, now we know the population. R, when the population, when P rather, is 532, meaning 532,000, equals 0 0.37 times the LN of 532 plus 0 0.05. Okay, pull out the calculator. There you are, okay. So 0 0.37 times, and I don't think you really have to hit times, the LN of 532 plus 0 0.05. So go back through this, make sure I did it right. 0 0.37, yes. Okay, enter. And we're going to round it to the nearest tenth. Oh, poo. No, I don't want to copy it. I'll just copy this. If I can't get the whole picture, there's no reason to copy it. To my way of thinking. Here's the answer I got on the calculator. And here, this is 2.3723. Oh, oh, it's only to the 10th. That's one decimal place. So I get 2.3. And then there's a seven. So this seven is going to cause the, the three to round up to a four. So 2.4 would be the answer I would put in 
the answer box, meaning 2.4 feet per second. Okay, that's just a plug and chug. Oh, except, yeah, you have to have read what P equals. P All right, P in thousands, in thousands, which means you don't put the zero, zero, zero. Okay. Now, another word problem. This is how I first met logarithms in a science class. The magnitude R measured on the Richter scale, which we don't use anymore, I just found out. The magnitude R measured on the Richter scale of an earthquake of intensity I is defined as R log I over I zero. That is I naught is the way you really say that. R equals log I over I naught. Where I naught is a minimum intensity used for comparison. If the intensity of an earthquake, so in this problem I, is going to equal 10 raised to the 8.62 times I naught, because it's that many times greater than the minimum. What is the magnitude? Here's the magnitude. What is the magnitude on the Richter scale? Okay, so. I'll have R equals log I over I naught, and I is 10 raised to the 8.62 times I naught, where conveniently the I naughts cancel. So we don't have to know anything about I naught. I love it. So we're going to be left with log 10 to the 8.62. Now there's a trick to do this quickly, but you don't know it yet. You will by the end of the day. Log 10 carat 8.62. Now, you're going to have to, if you've got this kind of operating system, you're going to have to come down before you close your parentheses. If you have the old, old system, in some ways it's easier. You don't have to go up or down. You just have to close your parentheses. Okay, so I'm doing that. Enter. 8.62. Oh, do you want to know why now? I'll tell you why now. Let's get a formula first. Oh, there's another one. Well, log to any base of that base raised to a power, let's let it be C, is just C. So this is log base 10, raised to the 10, which, I mean, not raised to the 10, log base 10 of 10 raised to this power is just gonna be, and I miswrote it, is just gonna be the exponent. So cool. So if I have an LN of 
e to the six, the answer is just going to be six because the ln is log base e. So if you have log base e of e to the sixth power, it's just going to be six. How cool can you get? Log base three of three is really log base three of three to the one. It's going to be one. Oh, super. Okay. Just thought I'd share. It's in your notes. It's on the video. Now this one, everybody misses just because it's so ugly. There is no need. Well, there is because you probably don't know scientific notation. You're going to get to learn how to make your calculator do the scientific notation for you today. The pH, that is the acid-base balance in your blood, for instance, or in anything, the pH of a fruit juice is 3.5. Find the hydronium ion concentration, that, of the juice, and use this formula. You're going to be... Excuse me. Off we go. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Come on. Why give me trouble? I'm a nice person. I shouldn't have any troubles. Airplane mode. Perhaps that will shut it up for a while. Okay. You're going to be solving for that. How ugly can you get? I propose this. Let X equal. This ugly looking thing. An ion doesn't have a zero charge. If you take chemistry, you'll understand that. This plus means that you've got a molecule that lost an electron, so now it's positive. Just telling you. All right, now I'm going to rewrite this as pH equals negative log x. Doesn't that look better? Yes, it does. Now, we're told that the pH is 3.5. This is the last problem. I'm going to make that negative into a negative 1. Negative 1 times the log of x. First thing I'm going to do is divide out the negative one. So boom, 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 boom. That cancels out, leaving us with negative 3.5 equals the log of x. Now all we have to do is change to the equivalent exponential equation. And to do that, write the 10 down there. Whenever you see log without a base, the base is 10. Now this is the base. This is the exponent. This is the other. also called the argument. So, 10 raised to the exponent 
equals x. So all we should have to do is put this in the calculator, but you've got to read the instructions underneath the answer box. Use scientific notation. Well, that changes our fun right there. Luckily, the calculator will do that. I'm going to show you how. Click on mode. We'll go back again, don't worry. Click on mode and you see normal flashing. That's the default, normal. Well, we're going to get unnormal. How about that? We're going to move to scientific notation. This is engineering notation. If any of you are going to be engineers, you might be using that. But scientific notation, well, I use my right arrow key to move over to SCI. And I click enter. And now Psi is highlighted. And in fact, we're going to round our answer to the nearest tenth. The tenth is one decimal place. You can make the calculator round to the correct number of decimal places by going down to where float is highlighted. Now, I prefer to keep this at float, but if you want to, since the nearest tenth is one decimal place, you can make the calculator do your rounding for you by going to one so that the cursor is blinking on top of the one and hitting enter. We'll change everything back to the way it was, but for now, we're going to calculate 10 raised to the negative 3.5. Enter. All right, here's our answer. Well, yeah, why not? Three point two E negative four. That is not scientific notation. That's your calculator. We're going to have to translate again. And I'm going to show you how, so you don't need to worry. Three point two E means times 10. E here means exponent. This is the exponent on the 10. And there's your answer. You should remember this. I think you have one more a uh, scientific notation problem in the homework. But let's go back and then take a break, but let's go back first and change this back to normal. So the cursor is blinking on top of normal. Hit enter. And then come down to float. Hit enter. Now we're back to the way we were. And now you can take a break and for 10 minutes. Uh, so what time would that be? It's 9.05 right now. So 9.15, that's a nice round number. Take a break until 9.15. And when you come back, we're gonna be working on the arithmetic of logarithms in their number system. Okay, see you then.